However, there was still an issue, as has been mentioned earlier on, related to the wording of the unilateral undertaking, which committed to pay monies but was not worded appropriately to ensure this money was actually spent on affordable housing. Hence, this application to be heard this evening. We have now resubmitted a compliant, acceptable scheme design, having had comments back from the planning inspector, and the new draft of the formal section 106 agreement, which is now appropriately worded and agreed upon by all parties to make sure that financial contribution will be spent specifically on affordable housing. Our financial assistance <coughs> in pursuing and approval on this site is testimony that the current new build proposal is the most sustainable long-term use for the site. We therefore request you endorse the officer's recommendation and approve this application. If I may pick up on a couple of issues by the, um, the objectors, um, in terms of the comments on the flood authority, we do have an engineer on board and they have submitted um, a drainage strategy that will then condition and will be discharged should this, this scheme be approved this evening, which will have to overcome a number of technical, um, technical audits and, and, and scrutiny. And then back to the first object related to the um, parking. At the moment, the site um, doesn't have any parking on site, so we, through consultation with, with highways and the, and the planning team, have uh, arrived and agreed that 100% in that location on the, main, on the main high street is sufficient. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Can I ask, is there more councillor present who wishes to speak on this item? No, no more councillor. In that case, it's open for the committee to debate. Yeah, councillor Lewis. Thanks, Chair. Uh, can I ask a question to the planning officer? In his presentation, he made reference to uh, the um, allowance for the applicants to pay £9,000 as a committed sum towards uh, affordable housing on the basis that the policy that he referred to uh, said that the uh, properties had been be abandoned. Uh, that was the first time I've heard that. Can you uh, me mention that a bit more, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I mean, thank you. That's come in over the last few weeks. The making of the open has been in for a couple of years or so. But the way it's been revised so since the uh, 15th of March, where it now references abandonment as being the test of whether it should be applied. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on that basis, then, I'm questioning whether this property has been abandoned because, as the applicant himself made reference to, it was it's owned by uh, it has been since 2007. Indeed, when it was transferred as part of the social housing stock, when the gentle, when <coughs> public homes were set up, uh, it's it had the same owner ever since. So I think to suggest that the properties have been abandoned is not entirely accurate. Uh, the gentle, as it's now called itself. And they have set up a profit making company with another partner, but the owner, as the applicant has said, has remained the same since 2007. So I'm questioning whether the use of a bank setting of the, the development has been abandoned uh, in order to get out of providing affordable home, uh, housing simply to pay £9,000, which I'm not sure how many affordable homes that will pay for. Uh, but in terms of the, the actual purpose for this development, like many other developments, as we said last time, I think on the previous two applications, World Partnership Homes was set up to improve the condition of housing stock in this borough, council housing stock. Some of that council housing stock, which was below the decent home standard, was properties such as this. World Partnership Homes was set up to renovate exactly these kind of properties. We did not set up World Partnership Homes or Magenta as it now calls itself, in order to flog off the most difficult properties that it wants to develop build new houses on the site to make more money, where we're told that 60, pe 60 pence in every pound will be applied back into community use. Well, actually, when we set up rural partnership homes, 100, pe 100 pence in every pound was supposed to go back into the community. So 60 pence is, is a bit of a bum deal, if you don't mind me saying so, Chair. And in terms of affordable housing, there is none on this site at all. This is an application, <laughs> this is an application by Magenta Homes, who for all intents and purposes are no longer a social landlord. They are here to make money and build houses. And we will deal with this as any other applicant. The site has not been abandoned. It has been neglected, but it has not been abandoned. Thank you, Councillor. I would like to have to come back on this one. Thank you. Just, just on the abandonment issue, effectively, 
That, that's saying that the vacant building fence should apply, but it's saying if the building had been abandoned, then it shouldn't apply. But what we're saying is it's not being abandoned, it's being kept in reasonable condition, and therefore they can't apply a vacant building fence. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ellison. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I think it's just worth briefly going over a bit of history on this particular site. If you look at page 55 of your documents, item 372, um, talks about the first planning application was refused unanimously by the planning committee in November 2016. I should know because I was the one who moved it. And after that, there was an appeal made against the refusal, and as has been quoted down here, and is it covered down here, the uh, planning officer, the planning field, I should say, inspectors, had a look at the reasons for refusal and dismissed effectively all those associated with the design of the building, but concentrated on the reasons being not having sorted out um, a 106 agreement or an affordable housing use or whatever. There was a lot of confusion about that, but because of that, the appeal was dismissed. But I say again, it wasn't dismissed on the grounds of the design of the property. So really, all these items on page 54, 13 items of representations, are no longer relevant because the building has not changed one iota in its design at all. So we can't use any of those reasons if we wanted to for turning it down because they've already been lost at appeal. So what we're here for tonight, quite specifically, is to look at the application or otherwise of the 106 agreement, the subsidies and the affordable housing element of it. The only new matter that seems to be raised since that this arose is this allusion or allegation that, going to, that the solar pump centre of West Kirby is going to be flooded as a result of this going on, or the building itself is going to be unsustainable because it will flood. I would like some brief answers on that from the officers, but as far as I can see it, the um, applicant has appeared to, if the officers will confirm this, appears to have satisfied all the problems associated with the affordable land. We may not like it. But they need to satisfy the 103 agreements with the affordable housing and all the other issues. So we can't bang on about the design of the building any longer because that's not changed. So please don't get caught up in going down that cul de sac with it, not relevant. All we need to convince <coughs> ourselves tonight is that the arrangements for 106 um, affordable housing and all the other issues that have been mentioned by Ian quite adequately, I might say, um, are all that we're considering. But before having said that, I would just ask for confirmation of the flooding situation because that seems to be an ambiguous element that's causing concern and raising sort of red headings and cul de sacs, whatever you want to call it. So that to me, those two elements, the 106 agreement and the flooding, are the only issues at, are, that are relevant with this application at this time. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. If you wish to come in at this stage, then I'll call Councillor Kelly in there. Thank you. Yeah, just on the, uh, the sporting issue, uh, the only one for the authority with the consultant, and they, they did object originally. Uh, back in January, but we, we have further information uh, and they removed their objection at the end of March. Uh, they effectively not object and subject to conditions 9 and 10. Okay, thanks, Neil. Councillor Kelly? Um, I, I agree with um, what David said about what it is we need to consider in the light of the, uh, uh, the appeal decisions. And, and uh, whilst not only sympathise with what's been said about density and, and parking. Um, the uh, aspect um, didn't find favour other people. The, the, the appeal dismissals centred around securing um, uh, the affordable housing problems um, of it for one reason or another. Um, and certainly the second time we brought back, uh, that was the principal reason given by us for, uh, for refusal. Now, we're faced with this vacant building credit issue that Ian was referred to. Um, and it is a relatively newish thing, and, and the, the, the officer refers to changes in terminology. Now, if I look at the terminology, because this is an argument in my mind about getting behind what, what, was, what it is the government is trying to achieve by bringing in this idea um, of, a, uh, of a credit. And it talks about, specifically talks about, um, national public policy provides an incentive for brownfield development on sites containing vacant building. By the way, incentivizing somebody to, 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 to bring forward a development that might not already have been put forward. That's, that's how I read it. 
when you say you incentivize the children, you're giving them an incentive to bring it back into use. And the whole reason that the gentle laughter was to read verbally. So that was already in the mind. So there's no incentive required. Now the incentive is a financial one. The idea that we will give them a credit. Now, has any financial viability paperwork been put forward with this application that says specifically the reference to action what's in our policy so far as affordable homes is concerned? That a development of 14 houses in Holland ought to have on site provision, on site provision of 20%. 20% of 14, I think, comes to about three. So it's no bad here, the amount of social housing that's being removed, but it is nevertheless the requirement of our policy that 20% ought to be provided on site. Now, I would have thought that to allow a developer, and particularly a developer with a background in social housing, and particularly on a development where we know we're losing, we're getting a net loss in an area where we wanted. Uh, more social housing. I would have thought the, vacant, the, the incentive behind the vacant building credit isn't there. It's just not there. It's a misuse, I would argue, of what government is intending that, that uh, credit to be used for. Now, last time we discussed it, we had on the table the conflicting uh, um, views of, of, uh, of between members and, and two, two degree officers as to what would take precedence. Our own policy which requires 20% on-site uh, provision, i.e. three houses, or the vacant uh, building credit. And I cast my votes at that time, we will continue to, to require on this site, as per policy, 20% on-site <coughs> provision. Because I don't think we need to incentivize this development, honestly. And I think that's what's behind building policy. And I know that, I know, Officers might say, well, that's not our reading of it. But I quite like that aspect of the test of the appeal because it's been turned down twice now on the whole principle of how we secure affordable housing. And I'd like to see an inspector tell me that, um, tell this committee that we can vote for something that strips out however many um, affordable uh, units within an area of high demand and replaces it with 9,000 when our own big policies, the major policy, say there should have at least been three houses on the second year. I'd like to see that tested for you. And on those grounds, I uh, don't refuse. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Councillor Abbey? Yeah, it's, it's just a bit of clarification. Uh, obviously, I'll be right on what Councillor Elgin said. It's clearly covered the drainage and the flood issues that were under the nine and ten. But I'm, I'm just. Confused this 3814, which is which is the MP PF, which is what uh, Councillor Kelly was talking about, is the uh, the vacant building credit. Now it's saying here, if I'm reading it right, if, if that hadn't applied and the status quo had been it would have been a contribution of 132,000 to social housing. But because they they decided they're going to use the trick of using the the vacant building uh, legislation is now only nine billion pound there to contribute towards social housing. I think that takes the whole ethos away. And I, I'm comfortable with what Councillor Kelly said. I would like this tested because I think this is clearly a developer and you know, irrespective of the majority taking the taking the proverbial here by trying to get away with something that should be contributed to within the community. And, yeah. And whether their values are socially minded or not, the reality is that they've done a trick here by using the latest legislation to actually reduce their contribution quite considerably when we're asking the trial policy is 20% uh, towards social housing or contribution towards social housing. Uh, they're nowhere near that with the 9,000. Uh, well, they're probably about 2%. Okay, so I would, I would be happy to support any, any uh, motion the council to take on to propose on that matter because I think this is paralyzing uh, in the face of what uh, we should be promoting and what developers should be promoting. Okay, thank you, Councillor Abbey. It's, it's obvious
from the debate that there is some opposition to the recommendation. Has anybody got a ball of words at all that they'd like to, to put forward as a reason for refusal? I guess we refused um, on the grounds of conscience policy. CS22, affordable housing requirements of the emerging cost trustee for Will, and therefore conscience of the national planning policy framework. Okay, so you're moving that for me, Councillor Kelly. Yeah. And you seconded it, Councillor Lewis. Okay, so that's been moved and, and seconded. I've asked, I'll invite the officer now to speak on that. Can you comment on that, please? Yeah, thanks. I mean, I, I just comment on the, the discussion in general, if that's okay. Just yeah. about the, the affordable housing for raising. I mean, the vacant building credit, it's. I mean, I can't start arguing with it, but it's a trick, and, you know, it's, it's to some extent, yeah. You can argue that it's, it's not. It doesn't make sense. But it is a national it's a government initiative, so we can't, we can't just ignore that. Um, so the 7% increase, effectively, the, the sum that has come up, we, we've come up with 9,000 pounds, that's, that is derived from the 20% of all the pounds of provision. So I think we touched on that as an example of, without the vacant building credit, it would have been approximately 132,000 pounds, which means the sum, which is consistent with what you'd expect within that area for 20% provision. But because we can only take 7% of that, because of the vacant building credit, that's why it gets, comes down to 9,000 pounds. So it's all, wrapped around from the 20% affordable housing provision, but because of the vacant building credit, it's stipulated to only take 7% of the 20%, if you know what I mean. So I think they're entitled to, to apply the vacant building credit themselves. So I'm not too sure about that. I don't think that's going to be. Okay, would you like to comment, Matthew? Yeah. Um, just to just be in chair, I mean, all, all, all I would say is that the, the reason that Councillor Kelly is suggesting that we use is that it, it hasn't applied, we haven't applied the 20% affordable housing criteria. That's not strictly the case. As he has just explained, we have, but because of the vacant uh, buildings credit, that, that figure is reduced. Um, so I, I would struggle to see how we would be able to defend that reason on, on, on appeal because in its strictest terms, we are applying a 20% policy, uh, but the actual figure that we would get is reduced because of the vacant building credit. So I think you need to be more specific about what your reason for refusal is actually about, because that's what we're going to have to depend on the appeal. Okay, well, while you're considering what Matthew just said, I'll invite Councillor Davis to come in. Just a very quick question for the council itself, I'd like to support from probably legal on this one. Well, when the stock transfer took place, Ian King Lewis has made a very comment before uh, about the community fund. Uh, and when, when the stock transfer uh, what did take place, how people asked to sign the agreement. And the community fund actually completed two years ago. So the community fund relevant to the stock transfer with Magenta, or as it was, Little Patch of Bones at the time was extinguished two years ago. And so the community fund was finished, yeah. but they are still a community-based company, Magenta, uh, who should be looking for um, different ways that they can actually contribute to help um, alleviate problems in their areas that they have their homes. That's the, the main point I just wanted to make. Uh, and I think that where Matthew just made the point about the twenty percent, I fully understand that. And it does Take some thinking about the scope of the stipulation and how it's set out. Okay, thanks, Councillor Davis. Can I invite now Councillor Kelly and Lewis as the movement seconder to well, ask whether they've considered well, again what they want to put forward? I mean, I'm about to say I've just done a, a search of the emerging cost strategy for vacant building credit to like green our policy on it. But it's not there, it's not mentioned at all by name. All that's mentioned by me and by policy in the, uh, in the cost assessment is um, the uh, policy CS22 affordable housing plans. It says, I like quote, proposals for new market housing of five dollars or above will normally be required to provide affordable housing on site at foreign rates, like by like 40 to 20 percent. Now, if that's to be reduced, that's on site at the following rates. If that's to be reduced, then the policy. Asks for, um, for, for the developer to, to 
demonstrate my to five for which means that policy. Now, in terms of the um, vacant uh, building credits, um, National Planning Policy Guide to Climate 21 talks about the policy providing an incentive. I just don't feel that we need to provide an incentive. That's, 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 that's the point that comes down. But when we test that, I'm not clear from what I've already said, um, citing you know, what it actually says about policy, what Matthew's was looking for me to say further, that will clarify the incentive and what the incentive is. Thank you. 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 Th
will assist you with that. I'm just saying that if you come with a, a mind to move refusals and that isn't changed, it is helpful if, in advance you speak to officers. But what you said is, of course, also correct. Okay, so to give, to basically note those comments, I'll invite Matthew now, and I think he's going to be... Oh, This issue of whether or not it should be on site provision or a commuted sum was addressed in the last appeal. The inspector accepted a commuted sum for affordable housing off site provision. So we've already addressed this in a previous appeal. The, the issue with the appeal was that it wasn't, ex, it, it wasn't explicit in the, in the agreement that was drafted that it would be used for affordable housing. It wasn't explicit enough for the inspector. But he's already addressed the issue of whether or not it should be on site or off site. So, to be clear, I think we would be, um, it would be difficult for us to defend what you're, what you're seeking to, to refuse. But, but ultimately, it's, it, it's your decision if you want to test that again at the field, despite the fact that the inspector has already addressed it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like Councillor Holton in now. Through you, Chair. Um, I have first asked you about the about each of the three options that you have for your housing on site.
wants to increase the building size, given that it's directly adjacent to all four parts of my area, the principal development site, residential purchases, etc. No, it's not the same. The new access road up and down here, the, the six houses with further private roads and office, and the apartment building. The layout and density of the scheme is considered to be generally in keeping with the surroundings, which is in the place of the residential area. The post houses have sufficient interest and character and will be in keeping with the nature of the area. The apartment building will be three stories tall, being located to the rear of the new houses, and have been designed so that the top wall appears almost as a traditional roof. This will minimize the visual impact of the building. New buildings have been cited so that they don't have no concept to our best impact from the immediate to surround the properties. All new possible windows will be sufficient distance from existing private garden areas, and not require separation distances are met. The site is adjacent to an existing scout hall, the majority of the objections we received from people associated with this, expressing concern that the residential use of this site will impact on future scout activities. Whilst this is considered a from my point, it is in any case not considered to be sufficient reason to warrant the views of the application. The proposal includes at least one or three park space per unit, together with some additional local park parking. Our strenuous issues have been considered by many of the small parts to be considered acceptable subject to suitable conditions. Overall, the proposed development is considered to make effective use of this site and will not have unacceptable adverse impacts on the neighbouring properties or the character of the area, and is therefore recommended for approval subject to these tax conditions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Neil. There's no qualifying petition. I don't think there's any more councillor present who wishes to speak. So, hope for the race. Yeah, councillor Kelly. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, I think we all received an email from one of the ward councillors, and you can't be here. Um, I think the contents of the email are probably not um, strictly planning related. Uh, I've raised concerns about construction, traffic, and grass wages. But uh, I thought, whilst we've got the highway officer here today as well, just bring that to, uh, to the person's attention that uh, there were some suggestions made that we made the process of construction um, a little bit easier on the last page than the uh, surrounding rooms. Um, but the Ward Council in his email uh, expressed support for the on site um, for the Ward Council uh, in East Okay, thanks, Councillor Kelly. Do you want to speak now? Yeah, yeah. thank you, Chair. Uh, we are aware of the damage uh, that's been caused to, to the highway uh, associated with the nearby uh, developments on the property. Uh, for this particular development, we can include for a precondition um, survey uh, prior to commencement of the construction works. Uh, we can request that the developer uh, provisionally replace any potentially sort of vulnerable areas of verge with all the suitable material and make sure it really steps back to verge before completion of the works. Uh, the overriding of construction traffic will be unavoidable uh, due, to, due to the narrow highways on, on the approach to this site. Okay, thanks very much. Councillor Lewis? Yeah, I just picking up on the point that Councillor Kelly raised, Chair. It's good to see under 3.62 on page 89 that all properties that they're building are affordable rent, which proves it can be done. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. Councillor Jones? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, given it's mentioned in the, the report, together with additional over, overflow parking, uh, I'd just like to know where that will be. Okay, thanks, Councillor Jones. We need to go on to that.
Nej, det fanns inte. Det var inte
Adventure Champion in the Council and also as Chair of World Adventure Action Alliance. I think this is what appears to be quite a marvellous adventure. Um, and I've just discussed and just come from an Adventure Action Alliance meeting um, and I've lined the details here and uh, the consensus of my colleagues um, was the same as me. Um, what I'd like to then, if that's acceptable, is talk to um, the officers afterwards. And it might be uh, nice for you to come present to the World Strategy Board if this is given for approval, um, just to you know, just to outline the details, because it's really exciting. Thank you. I, I think you, you mean the lobby the developers will yes, yes. come and present. Yeah, okay. Tony? Yeah, thanks, Chair. I mean, this, this facility is long overdue. It's a much-needed facility in the world. And it's a great boost to folks and their families and their carers, those folks looking after them. Uh, and without stifling debate in any shape, manner, or form, uh, I would have no hesitation in moving to approve this shit. Okay, Mom, as uh, you form in moving approval on the Council Chair? Yes, I am, but without stifling well, debate. I'm quite happy to, to second that, because I would want to move approval. Okay, I think there are good nights and uh, bad nights at planning committee. <laughs> I think there are a mix tonight. Um, so, generally, this is one of what we, you know, when we all look back at our careers, and we may be doing some of that later, David. Uh, sorry, we may be doing some of that later, David, uh, looking back on what we've done and what we've achieved. And this is one of those sort of landmark planning applications that are had something really involved, something really significant, something quite. I think unique really. I think we will become uh, perhaps world leaders in, in this type of facility and certainly amongst the, the best facilities in the world. Um, and it's no more than we will deserve going through that awful sort of uh, existence of, of you know, losing memory, dementia, and Alzheimer's and stuff that goes back. So, so generally it, it is. It, it, the, the other thing that may have not been highlighted during uh, the presentation is it's quite uh, employment generating in its own right. It will provide jobs. Uh, it will also provide football in that facility. So it begins to build up the story that is Willow Waters and begins to begin to look real, doesn't it? Uh, as always really happened. So I'm quite pleased that we played our part. We preempted with a site visit, so we've not held up the uh, application in any way. So we have a move there and we have a, a second there. Can we move to the vote? All those in favour? And against. Okay, that's been passed unanimously. Thank you for those who stayed and enjoyed what was going on earlier. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, what's next? Okay, now we're on to item six. And then you can this one. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application is for the conversion of 15 broken roads into a seven bedroom HMO. Uh, the application is prepared and planning committee on 21st of March 2019 for our members to visit the site. Uh, the site will be the seat and traditional surveillance centre and the introduction of residential use of ground for the third and country to UBP quantity SH3. Uh, the two key issues are the principle of introducing the residential use of ground for the third traditional surveillance centre and whether the proposal will provide acceptable living conditions for future occupiers. With regards to the impact on the traditional surveillance centre, this unit has been vacant for 26 years and the MPPF advised that the both planning authorities need to be satisfied that there are no reasonable prospects of the site being used for main town centre use and should support the planning operation on the basis that they would 